Okay, so here we are with the Mel Norme. Let's talk to him. Welcome back, Captain. You are our favorite customer. Now, what can we do for you today? Well, as always, I want to make some purchases, please, Mr. Mel Norme. What trade items would you like to buy today? Um, some more information. How wonderful, Captain. So, um... We can buy some fuel maybe in a minute, but for now we want information, and we want information about current events. You may have noticed the presence of an increasingly large number of red probe vessels. I think this guy's a little bit behind. He hasn't obviously seen what we've already done to those probes, so uh, that was a useless uh, piece of information. This is our catalog item 2418B. Do not blame us. We are not responsible for this violent folly. The product is not being used in a correct manner. Should you wish to confront the actual wrongdoers, we suggest you search the planets in Beta Corby for the probe's owners. Well, that wasn't too useful. Let's see if we can get anything better from the data on alien races. The Brevixes race evolved on the planet Arcturus One. They lived there in a relatively benevolent manner until the Kola came and destroyed them during the course of two or three unfortunate days. The Druge were largely responsible for the Kola finding the Burdick Seas. You see, the Burdick Seas were in long distance hyperwave contact with a race known simply as the Keg. For decades, the Geg and the Burdixes traded much valuable information until the Geg came under attack by an invading race who you may know as the Kora. The Geg warned the Burdixes that the Kora located races by their hyperwave transmissions and that they had already discovered the radiations from the Druge. When the Burdick Seas were kind enough to warn the Druge that a hostile alien race was homing in on their hyperwave radiations, the Druge shut down all their transmitters and erected a powerful hyperwave beacon on the surface of the Burdick Seas moon. The Kora changed course attacked the poor Urvik Seas and sadly destroyed them all. Ooh, now that uh, reminds me, we already got told about the Druge. The, um, we're gonna just go away from this guy now, we've got enough information. We don't have enough credits anymore. But yeah, the Druge and the Bovixis we're gonna go and check out now, I think. Because we've heard a little bit about them already. And it'd be good to go and find out a little bit more about what's going on over there, because um, these Kora, we haven't really seen the effects of what the Kora have done right now. Apparently they kind of just destroy anything they come across. So the Bovixis are one of those, um, one of those races. So Arcturus is, oh my word, it's all the way over to the, well, I guess the east, or the right hand side of the map. So I guess we're going to have to go through quasi space, and I'm just going to have to find out which direction we have to go, so I'll be back in a bit. And it turns out we have to go to this little bit down here, to the left of the triangle, to get to Arcturus. And we're going to go and see if we can find the Bavixi's moon at Arcturus. And we also need to go to, I think it was like, Zeta Persei 1, which was the Druge. So we're going to go and check out the Druge um, later on. But for now, since we're really close to Arcturus, um, we'll go there first and see if we can find their moon. So as I was saying, we've seen uh, what the uh, Urquan Kazerza um, kind of do as their doctrine in, in, in practice. I mean, we've heard the theory, we've heard what they're meant to do, um, but we've actually seen uh, it in action. We've seen how they have um, slave shielded planets, we've seen how they've um, taken in other races as their hierarchy to fight the other, the other um, species. Um, to slave shield them, such. Uh, so we've actually seen that in practice, but this might be the first um, kind of kind of evidence of what the Kora have done to us. We can, this is going to be the first um, time we actually see a wiped out planet, I guess. Um, so there's meant to be the Bovixis, one of these planets somewhere. There's got to be a moon somewhere. 
um, on one of these places. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wonder if um, we're actually going to see any Korra versus Kazerza. That would be quite cool to see, like an actual battle. Um, that was one thing that I, I don't know if they ever planned it, but I think it would have been cool if there was more than two player battles, or at least um, battles with multiple ships. I mean, that would have been quite amazing. Um, that would have really made the game quite quite something. Uh, but either way, this is a moon here. I don't think it's going to be it, though. It doesn't look very nice, unless... that's No, I don't think that's it. Um, I'm guessing we're looking for life or an energy source. Well, not life, probably an energy source. So, I think, since I'm having a bit of trouble finding it, I'll be back... Once I find out, I've probably just missed it while I've been talking, but yeah, I'll be back in a bit. And it was actually on this planet really close, which I couldn't see because it was like very dark and I couldn't see the ring. Um, he probably was shouting at me saying, oh, it's right there, it's right there, but unfortunately I didn't see it. So, here's it, it is the moon here, it looks like a kind of, I guess, um, Selenic, whatever it's called. It's, yeah, Selenic. No, it is Selenic. Um, so there is actually a bit of light, but there's also an energy signature, so let's see what's down here. Oh, look at that! That's like a kind of weird, terribly textured... Well, not terribly textured, it's got a kind of weird thing around it. I've just been killing some enemies, that's why you just saw that little blip there, but... Um, yeah, look at this thing, we found like a, a Burks of Ease caster. I think that was the thing that um, the Mel Norme was talking about. So, let's just read this. Right, so, basically another caster, another hyperwave caster. Um, I'm guessing it's going to do similar things to the Umgar one, so not really too useful, but hopefully we do find, I don't know, something. Uh, maybe if we show it to the Druze, we can, like, frame them almost, and they might do something. Um, be a bit more exciting if we get another hostile race. Um, so let's see. So the Druze said they were going to be trading with us um, when we go to them, but if we show them the... Uh, Bavixi's caster, then, I don't know, maybe some other thing will happen. And you just saw there, just below me, the um, 17th to 20th um, kind of natural portal just spawned just behind me there. Um, that would have been really strange if I kind of accidentally went into it. But, uh, now we need to go over to Zeta Persei uh, Planet 1 to meet the Druge. I have no idea what they're going to be like. Melnor may say that they're terrible, um, but I don't know whether that's because they're traders as well and they're maybe like some enemies. Oh my word, look at their ships, they're really strange. They're like weird sticks. They look a bit like, I don't know what they look like, they look very strange. They're not ex particularly fast either. Wow, look at this planet, it's like very red. Okay, let's save the game just in case like we have some hostility. Let's go in. Attention, alien starship. You have arrived at the central trade world of the Crimson Corporation, home of the Druge. Be welcome and take advantage of our excellent deal. Our sensors reveal that you have one of our more powerful hyperwave casters on board your ship. Have no fear, Captain. It was abandoned on the Bervixi moon, and by our law, it belongs to you. However, we are fond of the device, and wish to regain it through trade. Give us the caster, and we will give you all the fuel your ship can hold. We note you possess the Vortex Spawner. In exchange for the simple device, we will give you three Mauler Starships, and fill your fuel tanks at no extra charge. Well, I guess we go straight into trading with them? Sell items. Uh, I'm not going to sell the quasi portal. I think that's what they're talking about. I'm definitely not going to sell that. Maybe they're talking about the hypercast... Uh, not the hypercast, the uh, uh, hyperdrive. Let's sell the hyperwave caster. Captain, a special deal. A bargain unequaled. Instead of the usual payment we would give for this item, what would you say to a different exchange? We would like to trade your commodity for a highly valuable precursor artifact, the Rosy Sphere. Its origins are filled with wonder, and its powers are uncontestable, though subtle. What is your response? 
Well, there's no fun in the game without taking some risks and some strange offers, so why not? I accept this unusual offer. <laughs> you are indeed a wise young human. The rosy sphere is yours. Okay, I think we're done. We're not giving the portal spawner away. Um, so there we do. We're done. Oh, we can make purchases. What can we buy? This is your first time trading with us, Captain. Allow me to explain our standard operating procedures. We will sell you fuel, ancient artifacts, even our own Mauler starships. All that we ask in return is that you assign some of your crew to serving here at our trade world on a permanent basis. Uh, well, to be honest, it only cost 100 IU, so why not? Oh, jeez, I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, I might as well. Why not? I'm here. Excellent. Oh. Let us begin. Our inventory presently includes the Trident of Wimbley. Not just one, but fully three mystic prongs. Give this artifact its awesome capabilities. Are you strong enough to master its power, or will it master you? Cost? 100 crew. The glowing rod. What unearthly powers will you gain when you hold this coruscating step high above your head and scream, Kai! Lai Chi! Lai Yi! And it can be yours for only 100 crew. As always, we also have an unlimited supply of exceptional high performance starship fuel at the cost of 10 crew for 10 units of fuel as well as a freshly assembled Mauler starship which we will trade for 100 of your crew well that deal with the fuel is pretty remarkable I mean surely that's like the best way to buy fuel now we might as well just get the fuel from these guys to your vehicle. I expect will notice the immediate benefits of our secret fuel additives. Might as well buy a bit more fuel. Um, might as well fill up actually. That's like 20 times cheaper. Um, which is really good actually because of course it costs 20 units for a piece of fuel yet only one IU for a crew so that's awesome. Uh, we're done buying for now. We lost a lot of crew from that but we've also got a uh, a lot of uh, fuel as well. So goodbye, Drew. She were not too bad. It was a little bit like slave trading, yes, but uh, I guess we can uh, just forget about that for now. Okay, let's leave Drew's world. Um, what was it called? Crimson Corporation. It's a cool name, but I'll give that them. Uh, but I think for now, we should just leave the Druge and start uh, thinking about some of the other things that um, other people have been talking about throughout the game. Um, lots of people, lots of like the show Fixty, uh, the, the Sly Landro, I think it was, the Mel Norme expressed interest in these things called Rainbow Worlds and we know where some of them are, like Zeta Sextans I think was one, a blue star near the um, Sly Landro and, and places like that. So we might want to start looking for these Rainbow Worlds since they are worth 500 um, uh, what were they? 500 points uh, credits for the Mel Norme. So next episode, we should go look for some of these Rainbow Worlds, and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.